Hello and welcome to another Blender Bite Size video. In this one I'm going to create a very simple procedural textured gold leaf material in Blender 4. Here's the specs. I'm using Blender 4.2, Windows 11, Nvidia graphics card, Cycles render engine and a custom startup file. Just before I continue with the tutorial, let me remind you that you can grab this material and hundreds more on my Gumroad store, blenderbitesize.gumroad.com. Right, here's my custom startup, which I've got a separate tutorial on how to create, but it's a simple object in a room with some lighting and a camera. Easy. So I'll go over to the shading tab, enable display render preview. Select my object and click on new to assign a new material. That will give us a basic principal shader and a material output. And then I'll also name it while I'm here as well. So that if I come to append it on something else in the future, it makes it easy to find. I'm going to increase the metallic value to one, decrease the roughness to 0.25 and change the index of, re of refraction to one. The next step is to drag a connector out from the base color and search for an RGB color. That basically gives us a way of importing, inputting the color uh, whilst adding it to a mix node, which I've searched for by pressing shift A and apply it. I'll then click darken. And on the RGB node, I'll use a hex value of FFCB00, which will give me a nice warm gold color. I'll then shift uh, A and search for a separate color node. Connect that up to the RGB. Change the mode to HSV, which is hue saturation value. Search for and apply a combined color. Move that across as I need a bit more space. And then I need to make sure that the combined color matches the separate color. So I've got hue saturation value inputs. We just connect all the slots hue to hue, saturation to saturation, and value to value. Next up, I will search for a math node and drop that in the value or between the two nodes on the value line. I'll set that to subtract. Then I'll drag a connector out of the factor input on that mix color node and choose a layer weight with a facing output. So the combination of those nodes is basically going to darken that metallic material around the edges, or at least that's my hope. So if I select all of those and apply a frame with shift P and name it color, as that's what's giving us the overall color. Next up, I'm going to drag a connector out of the normal socket on a principal shader and search for a texture coordinate using the object output. Now it's a bit weird at the moment because we need something to convert that object output data into normal data. So we're going to grab a vector mapping node 
and also a bump node, making sure the input goes into the height socket. Then we'll duplicate that, connect normal to normal between the two. Then we'll grab uh, a value input node. And we'll set that to 10. Then a noise texture. And we'll use the factor to control the height in the second bump node. Already a hot mess. We'll use the value from the value node to put into the vector. And we'll use a mix node and we'll drop that between the mapping node and the bump node, as you saw me do there. We'll duplicate that noise texture and drop it between the mapping node and the mix node. We'll connect up the factor output from that second noise texture into the second slot on that mix node. We'll grab a math node, put it between the value and the noise nodes. Select divide and set the value at 5. We'll set the strength on the final bump node as 0.1 and the distance as 0.2. On the top noise texture, we'll set the rough, not the roughness, the detail as point uh, as 2. We'll connect the value node to the scale on that noise texture. And we'll connect the math node to the scale on the second noise texture and the mapping node to the vector on that second noise texture. I've got that a bit wrong with those connectors. Detail of 5 on that first noise texture and roughness of 0.5. And on the second one, we're using a detail of 3 and leaving everything else as it was. On the bottom bump node, a strength of 0 0.05 and distance of 1. So now basically this looks like a hand applied gold leaf material. It doesn't look like it's been smoothed down or created. And I'm just changing the input on that mix node to use the factor output from that top noise texture. Just fiddling about aligning things so it's a bit neater. Not essential, but we're going to frame these so that we know what this controls. We'll press Shift P to frame those, then N to open up this control panel and call it Leaf Texture. So there is our node setup. We've got one aspect controlling the color and also the um, blending of the color around the edges using that facing value in the layer weight and we've also got the texture. I'll just run down on the right all of the render settings that I've got enabled and set so that you can see what I have got arranged in case you don't get the exact same results and in the compositor I've just got the denoise node. So we'll send that to render using 512 samples and that came in at around six seconds, which is rather spiffing. And you can see here, it's given us a nice uh, variegated texture. Hope you like this one. Please remember to give it a thumbs up before you leave. And of course, subscribe. And any questions and comments, please leave those in the usual places. And I'll get back to you as soon as I can. In the meantime, thank you for watching.